one what stands out to you about the way you guys responded to that final push by Dallas down the stretch? Uh, we're just very resilient. I think, I think we relied on, you know, just uh, some of our championship habits from the guys that was on the floor, but also just our trying to get back to our mental toughness and figuring out how to win, you know. And, uh, you know, that was great tonight. I think defensively we was very in tune with the game plan. And um, I think that's two straight games where defensively we were, we were just in tune and, uh, and it resulted in a win for us tonight. Dennis called you a mentor, and what did you see from Dennis Smith tonight? Uh, the, the Knicks pass on a, on a really good one, and the Dallas and Dallas got the, the diamond in the rough. He should be a Nick. It's gonna make some headlines, but he should be a Nick. But uh, Dallas is definitely. I know they're excited that he didn't go there. So he's an unbelievable talent, athleticism. He's uh, he's very poised to be a, be his age. Um, can shoot the ball, can penetrate. He's going to only get better and better with the opportunity that he's given here to play, you know. So um, uh, Dallas got a good one. I've been known now. I've been I've been with him for so long now. So I've been known as to how his talent level. You know, Ron, talk about how big those shots. Huh? You know we're going to New York for right? Yeah, I don't care. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. That. You were playing against the guy who was playing his 20th season with the Mavericks. Can you play? Can, can you tell us a little bit about the legacy of Dirk Nowitzki? Uh, I think it speaks for itself. There's no reason for me to harp on it. I think when you say the name Dirk, he goes by one name. You don't have to say his last name. Everybody knows what, what he's about, what he's brought to this league, what he's brought to this Mavericks franchise. So there's no reason for me to harp on it. I think his le legacy and his name speaks for itself. LeBron, talk about those shots that Kyle hit in the fourth quarter. Uh, well, Kyle's big time, man. He's someone that we rely on, and especially when he's on the floor. You know, he's just there at the right time, uh, right place at the right time. He had some good, had some big time threes. Also got an and one down the stretch. Just his movement, his body, his energy, you know, allows us to uh, just keep defenses off, off and off kilter. You stayed in Jay's ear throughout the course of tonight. I heard you once in a huddle encouraging him. What's the message you want him to hear right now? Um, I just want Jay to be aggressive. When Jay's aggressive, I don't care if he misses 100 straight shots. I want him to be aggressive. You know, when the ball comes to him, look at the rim. Um, you know, and I think tonight, even when he was missing shots, he didn't just he wasn't as aggressive missing shots. And in the second half, even though he missed shots, he started getting to the paint, getting to the free throw line, exerting himself, and he started to shoot the ball more. So, you know, I want to I want to be the one who kind of stay in his ear, let him know, like, let's, you know, I want the, the Jay that I had to go against, you know, the last few years when he was in Boston, you know. So, you know, he's still finding his way, and the rest of the guys are still finding their way to the new guy. So, you know, it's a process. Talk about Kevin Love's effort on the, on the rebound and on the floor. Um, with 15 rebounds tonight. I mean, that's what Kev do. That's, uh, it's not a surprise to us, uh, but it was an uh, excellent play by him on both sides of the floor. You know, he's crashing the glass, got a tip dunk tonight. He shot the ball well. He's aggressive. And, uh, you know, probably the biggest reason uh, why we got this dub tonight. Is it David? David. Now to win, engage how you play, measure how you play. As a team? Yeah. Uh, well, you want to win, obviously. But I like the way we played in the Houston game, and we didn't get that win. I like the energy. I like the effort. I like how we was flying around. We just didn't get that dub. Um, and it carried over to tonight, except from the beginning of the game where they kind of got it going. But we was able to. Uh, we, we played a, a really good 48-minute game as far as our schemes and everything that we wanted to do. So, uh, you know, I'm satisfied with the last two performances that we had for sure. Well, he here. He here right now, you know, but. It's just, you know, I don't know how, how long was he in Boston. I'm not sure how long was he there. Four years. So uh, that's being familiar with the system. That's uh, him knowing his role and knowing exactly where he's going to be, where he's going to get his shots and things of that nature. What were we, 13 games in, I believe, or 12 games? I'm not quite 13 games in. So, you know, I know what's going to happen at some point. And, but we don't want to fast track it, just like we don't want to fast track IT's injury. From when he's ready, he's ready. When, when Jay gets comfortable, we'll know. You know, and I know it's there, so, you know, it's no, it's nothing for me to worry about. Time for one more. You've played Corver for almost a year now. What do you like most about playing with him? Um, he's just a professional. I love professionals, you know, guys who come to work not on, not on time but early. Guys who work on their craft, work on their bodies, don't complain. You know, just being true professionals both on and off the floor and going to give you everything that they got. I can always, um, I can always give everything back to those to those type of guys, and Kyle was one of those guys. So, how do you, how do 
help D Wei to find himself on the court as a brother and also oh. as a teammate. Oh, he'd be fine. He'd be fine. D Wei, 36 years old, he'd be fine. <laughs> he know how to play this game. He just struggled tonight, but I'm not worried about that. He'd be fine.